Today we are talking about recycling used antifreeze and coolant. So a few notes about antifreeze. Uh, in regards to automotive antifreeze it is made of either ethylene glycol or propylene glycol. Um, they are similar chemicals but propylene glycol is much less toxic. Um, both propylene glycol and ethylene glycol are biodegradable and will break down into carbon dioxide and water. Neither should be dumped into the environment as they contribute to water pollution. Um, they also contain chemical additives um, and they also will pick up trace metals and oils or even fuel uh, as they uh, circulate through your engine, your radiator, etc. over time. Uh, dumping used antifreeze is illegal. Um, dumping it down the drain is also generally illegal. Most water municipalities uh, don't allow that, um, again, because they contain contaminants like heavy metal, um, lead, cadmium, chromium, um, to be high enough in high enough levels sometimes to be regulated as hazardous waste even, uh, which obviously can never be dumped onto a landfill, or excuse me, onto the land, uh, sanitary sewer, storm drain, ditch, septic system, etc. Um, it'll also cause damage to your septic system and to the, the microbes in your septic system. If you dump coolant in there, you never want to do that. Um, also, recycled antifreeze is more cost-effective than brand new virgin antifreeze. Um, recycling antifreeze saves resources because ethylene glycol is produced from natural gas, which is a non-renewable resource. So, in regards to the different types and different colors of coolants on the market, uh, you can see here the different types of coolants and how they uh, correlate to what color coolant and generally what vehicles use what type of coolant and what type of inhibitor technology is in those coolants. So for example, if you drive a Toyota, um, it's going to be uh, phosphates and organic acids is the inhibitor technology and it's generally going to be a blue or pink color and it's going to be usually a long life or extended life coolant. So you can take a snapshot of this, screenshot of this slide if that helps you. Uh, three main options for recycling used antifreeze, on-site recycling at your facility, a mobile recycling service where they come to your facility in a truck or a van uh, and recycle the antifreeze on-site. Or the third option, off-site recycling where the waste antifreeze is transported to a specialized recycling company. Um, these services can also resupply your facility with recycled antifreeze. Um, all waste antifreeze recycling methods involve uh, two steps essentially. Uh, removing contaminants either by filtration, distillation, reverse osmosis, or ion exchange, or some combination of those. And number two, uh, restoring critical antifreeze properties with additives. Additives typically contain chemicals that raise and stabilize uh, pH, inhibit rust and corrosion, reduce water scalding, and slow the breakdown of ethylene glycol. And this chart here from the epa.gov um, shows comparisons of antifreeze recycling methods. So here's just a quick example of what a general or generic um, antifreeze recycling uh, machine looks like. Some are bigger, some are configured differently, uh, some have wheels where you can roll it around your shop. But you can do a quick Google search to find one of these if you want to buy one. Now we get into machine coolants, lubricants. Um, there's three basic types. There's water soluble, synthetics, and semi-synthetics. Um, water soluble uh, cutting fluids, soluble oils, also known as emulsifiable cutting fluids, are typically 50% oil before dilution. Uh, when mixed with water, they form a milky emulsion that is an excellent choice for general purpose machining. Um, the only downside is um, they can become foul smelling if they're not properly maintained. If the sump in your machine or equipment is not properly maintained, 
Uh, you can get microbiological uh, growth or fungus or bacteria that can stink. Uh, synthetics contain no oil. They use various polymers and chemical compounds to replicate oil's natural lubricity. Uh, they reject tramp oil, so they tend to be the cleanest of all cutting fluids, but are often the least lubricious, uh, uh, least lubricative. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Semi-synthetics contain less oil than emulsion-based water-soluble fluids and are therefore less stinky, but they retain many of the same lubricating attributes, making them suitable for a broad range of work than straight synthetics do. I remember all coolants, however, contain additives that enhance lubricity, inhibit rust, and most bacterial growth or reduce foaming. Uh, additives react favorably during machining to provide additional lubricity in the cutting process. Now, what fluid path you choose, be sure to follow the manufacturer's mixing recommendations. Uh, more coolant is necessarily not, not necessarily better also refer to your, your specific machine or equipment manufacturer's uh, owner's manual for the proper type of fluid to use in your uh, machining. Um, the water itself, which makes up roughly 90% of any cutting fluid, give or take, is also important. Uh, if you're not willing to drink your tap water, neither is your machine, if you think about it. Uh, filtration and water softeners, etc., are beneficial here. So you want to use good quality water, not crappy water. Um, also, installing a tramp oil skimmer on each machine tool can extend the life of the coolant in your sump. And you can also use a refractometer to keep a regular eye on the fluid concentration. So here's an example of what a refractometer looks like. Uh, it's a well-established instrument using for measure, uh, measuring the water content of liquids uh, it measures the ref refractive, uh, refractive index uh, of the liquid, which changes according to the moisture content. Uh, operation consists of placing one or two drops of the sample fluid on the prism at the front of the unit there, closing the daylight plate over the sample, and looking through the uh, focusable eyepiece and reading the scale. There's an example of a scale to the right-hand side of the screen. And again, here's just a quick example of a tube type oil skimmer. Uh, tube type oil skimmers are great for skimming oil off the surface of your, your sump in a machine setting because the tube can snake its way into a narrow opening that's going to and float on the surface and pull the oil back. You can also use belt type oil skimmers, small ones. Um, there's different options. I hope this video helped. Please like, share, subscribe and leave me a comment for future video topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching.